brought the snow dog down this trail last month. And pretty rough going because it's so undulating, but it packed it down nice. Now the deer are starting to use it, and Jim brought the snow shoes through, and I brought my wide skis through, so now we have a pretty hard packed highway coming up on Savin's place. Here's our outdoor facilities if anybody needs to use it, but better duck your head. Beautiful day for a walk in the woods. It's just above freezing, so even the footsteps are a little muffled compared to the loud squawk of that really cold snow. Pretty breezy out in the open, so I chose this wooded path. Really nice white cedar, shaded enough, it's pretty open in here. I walked about oh, two and a half miles so far, and I just saw my first bird. As I sat here resting, a black capped chickadee came flying down the trail and went by my head. Seen a few deer tracks, no wolf tracks, but except for the wind in the treetops, there is not a peep out here. Now we're back on what I call Tired Pine Island, it's named after an old leaning white pine tree that finally fell all the way over, but I brought some seedlings back here and put some barricades around them so the deer and the snowshoe hares couldn't get them. And been a lot of failures, but there's a few successes like these. I think they're over the hump now and they should grow up into a magnificent tree. Well, I've had a lot of this too. Or had a barricade around them for 20 years and maybe even replaced them a time or two. And just don't seem to be getting any headway before they get eaten off or die off. Here's another one that, well, it's not doing the greatest, but it's, it at least is doing, and you can still see the barricade that built up like a fort around them on four sides to protect them. Now, for those that remember, this is the, called the Cedar Throne. Got a little snow on the seat, but I'm not going to get up there, but to where I come back and throw us a tea and watch my white pines grow. The trail I'm standing on right now is about 100 meters south of the cabin, and if I zoom in here and get some of this stuff out of the way, you can... There you go. You can See right in the cabin window, and this, as I look out this way, this is what I can look down to sometimes. And I think the times spot the deer as they pass through here. Now we're back on the trail that heads south and then west below the cabin. They will take the snow dog around it this year and pack it down. It's made a real nice two mile loop for us to. As we head out of the cabin, we don't have to we don't have to backtrack on anything if we head out toward Hawks Pond or anything. We can go out or come back this way and have all fresh scenery.
as we go through here, we're walking on what was probably a, the edge of the big beaver dam. I'd say by the age of these trees, they're growing on the berm. 150 to 200 years ago and they had scooped enough dirt out of right where we're walking on top of this ice right now that it's, it's a deep water channel normally deep enough that nothing ever grew back whereas out in the further out where they didn't scoop any dirt out over the years the trees and vegetation grew back into a, a solid forest again but again as we come back this way you see this break here, and this is where the they'd pushed the dirt up and made that ridge of that dam right there a long time ago. In the old days, we always called this a ski trail, but it's pretty undulating, kind of narrow in spots, and got some. So it's not really a, a nice ski trail, but with the snow dog to run around here and pack the trail down hard, it turned into an excellent place to take a hike. Right through here, there was never really a, a trail here. When I cleared the dead wood away, I just pretty much went down kind of a spot that was lower and wetter, so nothing was growing on it. And then as we go ahead, you see the, the land just rises up just enough that the tree type will change from the cedar and get into some more birch balsam. There's been nothing using this trail, except for the one or two times that I think Jim and I walked it. We hadn't used it much the last few years because, well, so much, it was so hard to, yeah, you know, Knee deep snow, and you had to, you only wanted to go out and break so many trails in and stuff like that. So, we you know, just kind of went out and back to Hawk's Pond the other way. And now, again, the snow dogs helped us so we can run around and pack this down one time. And it makes it really nice, or really nice for the old men. I was always surprised I never found any cabin, a cabin remnant up on this higher piece of ground in here. And then a few years ago, I did spot an old well. So there was something going on here, but no sign left to whatever structure was here. It's all grown up in the trees now, but we're looking over what was a new homestead back in the 1930s, if the snow wasn't on, we could walk over and see the perimeter of a few structures and find the old cribbed up well. And the land does rise up a little bit in there, so it was drier, but I think he was one of the Johnny come latelys of the homesteading until he got down here in the lower ground, which in 
the 1930s was dry enough because it was such a dry period of time, but nowadays it's pretty wet down here. As we come by here, this all this eating off brush here, that's dogwood. Deer love it in the wintertime, so I never have to worry about trimming that back. They'll, they'll keep it browsed down. All I've seen for tracks along that stretch was one grouse walked across and a few squirrels. Coming again to Newt's old homestead from the south, which I think after Newt passed away, they might have moved in and used this. Well, I know they used it for a for a logging camp for a few years by the size of the root cellar they dug and some of the other stuff that was laying around. The old horse drawn plow that I found out here is I cut some brush one day and like I said it's a it's another way to get out to Hawks Pond. We can come out this way and then continue on our regular route and swing around. It's a, to keep this area open. It's a it's old homestead fields pays off on a day like this. This is what I call the middle, the, the middle beaver pond. And oftentimes in the summer we take the zigzaggy walk as, as we walk the top of that dam, but in the winter we stay low and just go out the first time across and make sure the ice is okay. And it's, especially where the spring comes in, but once we have that packed down, it's going to even freeze more so we know we're we know we're good to go across. This is where when I did come across at Christmas, at New Year's, there was evidence of a lot of slush over on the right side, but we were good. These dead cedar trees and just stand like this, it's stark. I mean, they don't look much different than they did when I first started coming through here 35 years ago. Some of the paperwork that David found at the courthouse, you know, transactions and such, this was referred to as the mill site. 
and it was five acres that was even taken off of these 40 acre parcels when they sold them. With the special reference that it was the mill site. So I've never seen very much out here except that old car and his few buildings, but if it's what they might have done is had a bulldozer when they were done, they just cleaned it by shoving everything off into that swamp over there. So I think I'm gonna have to take a walk over there in the summer with the metal detector and see if anything shows up.